You don't want to be like this. This is disgusting. This is awful in every way. If I could kill it, I would. But I legally can't. But I've considered it. Hello everybody! Today we are going to be looking at a scenario where the United States has a civil war in 2024. Now guys, of course, this is going to be a Republican versus Democrat scenario. It's just what I think is the most plausible scenario for 2024. If the USA was going to have a civil war, I feel like this makes the most sense. And just looking at these borders, we might have some disagreements here. Guys, I gotta tell you, I googled a map of what Republican and Democrat elections looked like in 2024. This is the map I got, okay? We cool, we cool. Also guys, I wanna also say that I did a lot of research into this. Because I didn't want my opinion coming off as bias. I wanted an actual, like, research thing. So I did research to see who would win. I did come up with a conclusion, which you'll see at the end of this video. Also, nuclear bombs and alliances are going to be included. But of course, just watch the video and see what's going to happen. I don't want to tell you everything at the start. But I should also say where the capitals are, because I have colored them in with the color of yellow. The Republican capital is Columbus. If you couldn't tell, the red team is the Republican team. And the Democrat team is the current U.S. government. Of course, their capital is going to be in D.C. And this is the map we have. Democrat versus Republican. Democrats are blue. Republicans are red. Got that down? All right. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, United Kingdom plays. Why'd you pick Columbus? Why not Austin, Tallahassee, or Philadelphia? Those are all very good points. Austin's not a bad idea. But it has, Austin has about the same population as Columbus does. Tallahassee has a slow population. And also, Austin and Tallahassee are very far away from where, well, DC is. But Columbus is very close. Now, but you might say, what about Philadelphia? Well, I feel like Philadelphia is pretty exposed. Philadelphia, I would say, is about right here. And you have the mountains cutting them off from the rest of the, the Republican states. And they're surrounded by blue team. So, yeah. But Columbus is right there. They have the mountains protecting them, as well as the Ohio River. And Indiana and Michigan protecting them from their side and north. I thought it made the most sense, okay? Alright, y'all probably got tired of me yapping. I've started like 18 times now. So, let's get to the war stuff now. So, the first thing that is going to be happening in this war is Republican troops pushing into Illinois. We see a push in on almost all sides, and they all go successfully. We see Minnesota getting clapped up by Wisconsin, and I think this is North Dakota and South Dakota right here, I think so. But they are getting evaded by both of them, and that's because, again, the Republican Party took uh, Democrats by surprise, so that's why they have the advantage at first. Looking over at New Mexico and Colorado, if you guys didn't know, lots of nuclear facilities and where lots of nuclear bombs are stored are in New Mexico and Colorado. So Texas is going to focus their troops in on this area, and any nuclear bombs in this area up here are going to be moved to a safer area. So Texan troops push into New Mexico, and so do the troops of Arizona. Multiple states push into Colorado, but they do have a bit of a struggle since Colorado is pretty mountainous. And eventually, we are left with a front line that looks like this. Looking over at New England, we can see Pennsylvanian troops push into the area, and even target New York City. We see specifically Ohioan troops target DC, and even push into Virginia. North Carolinian troops push into Virginia, but Virginia manages to hold out. But now, the blue team, or the Democrats, are fully prepared and mobilized. And the first thing they're going to be doing is causing a huge blockade, so the Republicans cannot get any trade from the outside world. And their blockade looks something, well, something like this. Uh, I should also probably say that Virginia has the Atlantic Fleet and California has the Pacific Fleet, so this is why they can do this. And their plan is going to be to try and cripple the Republican Party, but their plans get foiled after a few days when Mexico comes in and starts trading with the Republican Party. Now, if you guys didn't know, the president, or Mexico's president, and I should also probably say at the start, that Trump is leading the Republican Party and Joe Biden's leading the Democratic Party. I'm stuttering so much. Damn. But Trump and the Mexican president actually like each other a lot. I think they're buddies or something. I looked at an article and it said it, guys. Okay. So later in the war, Mexico might even consider joining. Now, you guys might be saying, what about Canada? Well, Canada is more liberal and I think in favor of Joe Biden, specifically their president's in favor of Joe Biden and their people. So, yeah. If Canada was going to join a side, they joined the Democrats. So looking back at New England, we can see New Yorkian troops push back the Pennsylvanians, and they even managed to make a push in. And over by Arizona, we can see California make a push into, well, Arizona. We see Washington and Oregon make a push into Montana and Idaho, and it goes successfully. Now the west over here on the Pacific coast is definitely going to be the blue team's trump card here, because California is very powerful. So blue team troops push into Utah, and make one large push into the Republican Party. 
Over in New Mexico and Colorado, we can see Texan troops continue their push in, and they start to cripple New Mexico and Colorado a lot. And eventually, we do see New Mexico's government decide to surrender, and Colorado on the verge of being next. We see the first very, well, I'd say New Mexico is probably the largest victory so far, but troops over in this area manage to capture Chicago, and even also manage to capture Springfield. And with that, Illinois' government decides to surrender, and so far this is not looking very good for the Democrats. But the Democrats are not giving up yet, as New Yorkian and New Jersey- New Jerseyan? Is that what they're called? New Jerseyan? Maybe? But they continue their push into Pennsylvania, and even manage to capture Philadelphia. They also push into Ohio, and so far they're doing good in this area. But in Virginia and Maryland, they are doing less well, as Ohio and troops continue to push across the border, and DC is on the verge of being captured. Virginia, which is having to defend multiple front lines, is not doing too well at it. And it's because they're fighting, like, very large front war. It's not nice. So they are going to struggle here, but manage to hold out. Minnesota is going to be the next state to fall, as they start to fall back and eventually lose their capital, and their government surrenders. Looking back over at the west coast, we can see Californian troops push across, through the front lines, towards Colorado in hopes of trying to liberate them. But of course, this is going to take a long time, especially for Utah, which is very mountainous. But their push into Arizona is going quite well, as they even manage to push up and capture Phoenix. We can see Washington and Oregon continue their push into Montana, which goes successfully. And eventually, these states right here are losing very populated areas, but they still manage to hold out. We see Pennsylvania start to fall back, but they do manage to hold out as Ohio sends troops up there, as well as other states. And that's mostly because these states right here, especially Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan, can send their troops over to this front line since they are done with Illinois. Or Illinois, I'm sorry to anybody from Illinois, I think I pronounced your thing wrong. Virginia starts to fall back, but they still manage to hold out and keep their navy going, or the Atlantic fleet going. We see the rest of Colorado capitulate, but the blue team still continues their huge push in. We can see Alaska kind of just sitting here, they're not really doing anything. They can't really contribute resources, so they're just kind of sitting here, holding a defensive against any try to, any naval landing that might happen, so yeah. We see since Texan troops are done in Colorado and New Mexico, we can see them going over to the border, or well, to the front lines of the blue team, and managing to stalemate them for the time being. Looking back over at the east coast, we, we can see Washington starting to get encircled as Virginia finally falls and New York even gets pushed back. And eventually, we see an entire encirclement of the city, and so far, the Democrats look like they're struggling a lot. But as I said before, they are not going to give up, because they do not do that. We see the Californian troops, as well as other troops in this area, manage to push back the Texans, and even almost make it over the two New Mexico. Montana starts to fall back, but eventually, the push into them is stopped, as troops flood into the area, or Republican troops flood into the area and stop them. Now, one thing the red team does have a monopoly on is nuclear weapons, as I said before. I think they have all the nuclear weapons the US has. So yeah, they could always just nuke their own cities, but I don't think they'd do that, honestly. Uh, yeah, they wouldn't nuke their own cities. But looking back over at New York, we can see them making another push in and pushing down towards Washington. We can see them manage to break the encirclement and keep Washington up. Though back over at the West Coast, we can see Texan troops manage to push back the Californians. But in a more or less defended area, in Cascadia over here, we can see Washington and Oregon continue their mass push in, into this very undefended area, and it continues to go successfully. We can see Pennsylvania also starting to fall back, and eventually a spearhead towards Columbus being made. But troops in this area do manage to push in the back before the spearhead can be completed, and a stalemate is set up on the border. We see troops from these other states right here manage to push back the Washingtonians. That is definitely not how you say their name. Holy crap. I'm sorry, I'm butchering your name. But we do see them manage to push them back out of this area just a little bit. Now at this point, the blue team is taking basically just rocks, which is not very good, but they're taking land, right? Land is land. But at this point in the war, we can come down to a bit of a stalemate here, or it has come down to a bit of a stalemate. And at this point, the Republican and Democratic parties are searching for allies. And what do you know? Mexico joins the war on the side of the Republicans. Now, whether or not you think this is realistic or not is up to you, but it is what I'm going to be doing here. And don't worry, because Canada joins the Democrats. Alright, now it looks like most of North America is at war. Now, if you're wondering about support countries, I really don't know. I feel like most of Europe would probably be supporting the blue team, but Russia and China might be supporting the red team, maybe. But anyways, let's get back to the front lines. We see Mexican troops push back the Californians and help the Texans keep the front line going. 
Though with the extra support of Canada, we can see troops being withdrawn from this area to try to hold back them from entering into Detroit. So this does give the blue team a little breathing room as they push back into Ohio. We see the Republicans continue their push in and almost capture DC once again. Their push is halted. We can see Mexican troops push into California. We see Canadian troops push into Alaska, but this is going to be eventually stalemated as Alaska has been well defending itself pretty well so far. But again, with the support of Mexico, we can see the Californians in this front line right here getting pushed back. As Mexico in this war is going to support the, or the Republicans. Now, now, it should also be said that the Democratic Navy here, or the Atlantic Fleet, Pacific Fleet, are still going to have a breeze defending these areas, and are probably causing a blockade with Mexico too. And we see the Mexicans and Texans create an encirclement, which goes successfully and encircles thousands of Californian troops, and to which all are forced to surrender or be captured. And with that, California's front line in this area starts to crumble a little bit, but they do manage to hold out. No movement on the Detroit front line is, well, happening, because the Michiganders are defending it quite well. But the push towards Columbus is going successfully, and they're even threatening Cleveland, but it is eventually stopped. And we can see a mass buildup of Republican troops, all from around the states, specifically from Florida and Texas, and other southern states. And with the biggest W the Republicans take in this war, they managed to capture DC. Now this completely shocks the blue team, but it's not that big of a surprise because the red team does outpopulate the blue team by a large margin at this point. So with the capture of DC, we can see troops around this area having to reorganize, and it allows Ohio to push back while the New Yorkians. We can see other states in this area continue to push back Washington and Oregon, and it goes very successfully. Eventually, we can see Mexico taking a W of their own and capturing Los Angeles, which I think's right there, maybe. And we can even see the Ohioans and other states in this area capturing the ports right here. We can see the Ohioans continue to push back the Democrats here, but they are eventually stalemated as Canadian troops enter the area. But it seems DC is far from being retaken. We see the Californians push back the Mexicans and Texans, but they do not manage to fully push them out of their own state. We see Canada making small progress into Alaska, but once again is going to be stalemated, and we can see Ohio making a slight push into New York. We see the Mexicans making another offensive into California, which goes successfully, and they push up and capture Los Angeles again. We see red team troops continue to push back the Washingtonians, I've said that so wrong still, but they do manage to push them back, and at this point, it seems the war is in favor of the Republicans, or the Red Team. Eventually, we see Republican troops push across and even capture land in Canada, and we see New York continuing to get pushed out of Pennsylvania. At this point, California is starting to fall back slightly. They have used a lot of manpower holding up this front line right here, so they are going to be worn out. That's why they're not doing it successfully against Mexico. Mexico is fresh into this war. This war has probably been going on for years. Mexico and Canada just joined. So they're pretty fresh into it, which is why Mexico can do this. So the Mexicans push up the Californian coast just a little bit, and the Texans manage to push them back in Arizona. Looking back over at Canada here, we can see the Canadians manage to push back the Ohioans and Michiganders, but New York fails to properly defend New Jersey as their coastline is getting taken. They're also pushed out of Pennsylvania, almost all the way out of Pennsylvania, and we get a front line that looks about like this. The Mexicans continue to push up the Californian coast, and we even see Texans push across into this area right here, but they do manage to capture these areas and continue to push up. We see a re-push being made into Canada, but it is eventually stalemated, and the New Yorkians pushing back the Ohioans. At this point, with so much support and troops coming from over on all these states, and even Mexico, we can see Washington and Oregon being fully pushed out of, well, the Republican area, and small pushes being made in. At this point, we see the Mexicans start to target California's capital, which is... I forget the name of it, guys. I'm sorry again. But I think it's like right there, right there, right there, right there, 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 there. But the Mexicans push up and they capture it. Which is going to be California's last straw as they start to fall back. And Nevada is also starting to fall back. Once again, we can see New York being kicked out of Pennsylvania and a re-push being made into them. We can see troops pushing over towards... I forget what the city's called over here. What is it called? Seattle. Seattle. It's called Seattle. They push over and try to capture Seattle, but it is eventually stalemated. But we do see Republican troops even push up in the Canada here, but, this, but it does not have much meaning, as I don't think this area is very populated. Right here. So with a large amount of troops being pushed into this area, we can see New York City being cut off from the rest of New York. 
and New York starting to fall back. We see troops in this area continue to push back the Canadians, until eventually, Ontario is starting to be threatened. Or Toronto, I'm sorry, Toronto. Toronto is starting to be threatened. Eventually, we can see California's government and Nevada's government surrender, and Oregon also considering surrendering. Seattle is captured, and overall, this western coast, or western area right here, finally falls over to the Republicans. And with that, a small push is made into Canada, but the Canadians managed to stalemate it. And with another big W coming in for the Republicans, we can see them taking Long Island. And with that, the Republicans have a slight bit of a breeze pushing into New England, as New York has just been wiped out. We see them push up into Canada and try to capture Ottawa, but this fails, as Canadians put up a fierce defense, and the Canadians even manage to push back the Republicans. But eventually, New England falls over to the Republicans, and Ottawa is managed to get captured. Does manage to get captured. And with that, we can see Canada decide to sign a peace treaty with the Republicans, and the Republicans have won the American Civil War. And so looking at a peace treaty here, we can see the Republicans just getting full control over the United States, but Canada is forced to pay reparations to the Republicans, and Mexico and the United States, or this new United States, have a very good relationship, and are trading partners and best friends for now. So yeah, holy crap this is a long video. But that is going to do it for my American Civil War scenario. Guys, this was unrealistic, I gotta tell you, I don't want to come across as bias. This is just what I thought would happen. We can all have different opinions. So yeah, thank you all for watching. I greatly appreciate it. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.